Hello everybody, welcome to Pokemon Sword. This time we are going to be taking on a hardcore Nuzlocke challenge of Pokemon Sword with only grass Pokemon. Now the rules for a Nuzlocke, especially the hardcore, are going to be slightly different because of the challenge that this is going to pose on me. So we are not going to be using any items throughout the battle, especially in battle. If we have to use revives or anything in between, we might have to do that, but I will not do that for the Elite Four or like the championship battles. We're going to keep doing this in hardcore fashion where we're only going to be collecting one Pokemon per route as long as it as long as it falls within the guidelines of being a grass Pokemon it is fair game if a Pokemon faints at all during a battle they are going to be considered unalived so we are going to have to put them in the PC or release them regardless of how rare they may be and we are unable to use that Pokemon or any Pokemon of the variation the only rule that I'm not going to impose is again because of the challenge this is going to pose is the over leveling portion of this I know for a fact that the champion has a Charizard and we are running all grass Pokemon. So I will try not to over level. If the outcome is going to be very dire, then we might have to over level some. I'm going to try to stick to no over leveling unless in like severe cases, because very easily that Charizard could sweep our entire team. And then we have to start this entire gameplay over or jump into the next series. I want to have fun. I want to make this entertaining. So let's go ahead and jump right on in to Pokemon Sword with grass types only. We're going to start this play through the exact same same way we do every other playthrough where we choose a character who looks like us we go ahead we make sure the name is Masfiro, and then we make sure the aesthetic is right uh jumping on into the game here we get this arena with a bunch of fireworks chairman rose is talking pretty much the same way all the professors do in the beginning of the game giving you the full introduction then uh, very quickly we have to meet the champion lee who just kind of does a little foot smash into the grass does a cool little pose up in the air that all the fans just seem to love that then we go right to our house where we have the enemy slash rival hop walking up to us and just like kids nowadays we're just sitting on the couch playing on our nintendo switch when hop just decides to break into the house him and apparently his sheep decide to run into the house and he just briefly comes in says hi and then leaves we decide to go to our room and gather our bag and our beanie which looks so good with the aesthetic before starting our journey outside of the house we do make sure the bag fits the jeans look great and we see hop waving to us at the end of our driveway uh, weirdly enough there's a sheep just bashing his head into a wall because he's had a very stressful day i feel it hop decides the sheep doesn't matter anymore so he takes off and his sheep decides to follow him along we head on over to his house talk to his mom while he's in there and she lets us know that his brother is going to be at the train station and that hop says he will meet us there and he takes off at the train station, we do find out that Hop's brother is the champion, Lee, and I don't know how I feel about this. So Lee does the cool little hand thing, ignores all of his fans just like every celebrity does, goes right to his brother, and then they take off towards their house and we have to meet them. Showing up finally to their house, we get to talk to Lee and Hop. Lee decides to show us the three starter Pokemon, Grookey, the Funky Monkey, Score Bunny, the Fire Bunny and Sobble the Crybaby. Grookey decides to climb a tree, Sobble hops into water, and Scorbunny just runs around with them hot feet. Grookey decides to hop him in the tree and beat out of a pineapple berry, which falls down, scares Sobble. Sobble shoots Scorbunny. Scorbunny just, this all, all this chaos just, just happens, okay? There, there's not much I can really go into that. So very quickly, we go up to the Funky Monkey, we grab Grookey, and we name him, well, Grookey. Uh, there's not much to say here, but this typing format just seems pretty interesting to me. Grookey gives us a high five. Hop decides to grab the crybaby because he also is a crybaby, pretty much. And Lee, who really does not want Scorbunny to feel left out, grabs him. Hop decides to challenge us to a battle because he doesn't exactly understand how type advantages work. So he leads out with his Wooloo. We lead out with Grookey. Grookey's going to use a couple of scratches to weaken down this Wooloo. It does a fairly good amount, but the tackle doesn't really hurt us back too much. So we get scratch number two to come off. He's looking really worse for wear. This tackle does a little bit less than the first one, and the third scratch will take the Wooloo out. <laughs> This does allow us to level up, and Sobble comes out here. Sobble's going to use a poke with his pound, and we're going to use Branch Poke, our new grass move, and do a solid, like, 70% onto this thing. Uh, the second pound's not going to do anything, but this Branch Poke will take Sobble out. Hop is very disappointed that he loses, but that's too bad. 
Afterwards, we hear a crash right near my house, so we come back and notice that the gate that the sheep was bashing his head into is now open. So, in pursuit of the sheep, looking like he snuck into these woods, we decided with Hop to run into the woods to try and find the sheep. Inside there, there is just this dense, dense fog, and looking around, a Pokemon decides to show up. This is going to be Zacian, or Zacian, whatever you want to call him. This is the Pokemon that is essentially from Sword version. He just decides to make more and more fog, and eventually it gets so overwhelming that we just can't see. Somehow, with all the fog, we actually get knocked out, like this is like knockout gas or something. We just slowly wake up in the woods very dazed and confused from like college days or something and we see that leon is here also to save us essentially he really was worried where we went back at my house leon decides to leave with hop and we decide to head towards the next town to figure out what's going on with the professor's area leon beats us there invites us into somebody else's house essentially and a cute little doggo greets us while we are there we find out this doggo's name is yamper and that he is the Pokemon of Sonia, the professor's assistant, and she just kind of gives us a brief little rundown. She tells us that Rotom phones are really cool and that she is going to give us the Pokedex so that way we are able to continue on with our journey. We decide we don't really need to be here anymore, so we just go on and leave and we head to Route 2 to talk to Hop. Leon decides to come up and tell us how we're going to catch a Pokemon, and I'm super excited to see maybe a Score Bunny or his Charizard come out to catch this Wooloo but instead he throws out a bird and still ends up catching the Wooloo without real problems. We decide to see who our first trainer is, and it is Youngster Jake. Unlike Youngster Joey, he has a squirrel instead of a rat. I'm a little bit disappointed, but we had no real problems taking him out. Going to the actual professor's house at this time, Leon's already talking to her. We get invited inside to just kind of talk about how things are going and how Dynamaxing is. While during this conversation, Hop decides, let's have a battle. So we go outside. We go to the back of the house because I knew there was an item back here and it just happened to be payback. Unfortunately, Grookey cannot learn payback. I already checked. And Hop decides to challenge us to a battle. In this battle, Hop does the exact same thing he did last time. He's going to throw a Wooloo out. Wooloo's, again, not really a problem. We're just going to use a couple of scratches to happily take him out. We know that Sobble's going to come after. We'll poke him a couple times with our branches. And I'm pretty sure that I saw that there was three Pokemon in this battle. So there's one more that we just haven't seen that at some point Hop decided to go catch. We do get unlucky with a crit at the very last little bit of HP, but that's not a big deal. Hop's third Pokemon that we didn't see him ever catch was Rookie D, and the Pex scares me. Not really sure how much damage it's going to do and it barely does anything and we're actually able to take the rookie D out with no real problems. Finally Sobble decides to come out here and show his crybaby face so we poke him a couple times in the face with our stick and he just cries more and more until the point that he decides to faint winning us the battle. After the battle we see some shooting stars come down which is apparently good luck and they land right next to us. Hop thinking it'd be a good idea decides to pick up the molten rocks and hand one of us to us so we also get third degree burn. The stars were used to make the Dynamax bracelets that the professor gives us the following day. And also that following day, Hop decides to run off again, telling us to meet him at the train station for the next area. We decide to head inside after he gives us the useless move of Swift. Inside the train stations, both of our moms decide to walk in, wish us luck on our journey, and we decide to board the train. Here on the train, me and Hop decide to play on our phones instead of socializing like normal people, and we get all the information about the wild area, which is going to be the next area that we are going to visit while we are here. It looks beautiful, it's big, and there's a ton of wild Pokemon. Sony decides to meet us while we're here, she kind of waves us in, and Hop decides he is going to be a legend and just leaves instead of having any more conversation with the rest of us. Us. Sonia decides that he's not really worth it and she decides to give us a Pokemon Link box access so we're able to access our Pokemon box whenever we want and we are going to start our area over here into the wild area unsure of what we're going to catch but there are a couple of Pokemon that we're going to catch very soon. I would like to thank everybody for watching today's episode. Please make sure you like the video if you like the video and drop a comment down below about what you would like to see in the next series or how you guys are liking this video. Subscribe to the channel so you know when we are posting new videos if you hit the little bell icon next to that you'll get notified whenever we get to post videos also check down in the info description we have all of my social links how you guys can get a hold of me if you have requests or pretty much just any little loose ends you could possibly think about and once again if you guys like the video go ahead press that like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more until then i'll see you guys next time